Previously, I posed the question, is there a particular configuration of a linear system, or our A matrix to be more specific, that allows us to solve for the unknowns of that system much, much more quickly and easily? The answer to that question is yes, there is such a configuration, and that is going to be the topic of this video. Howdy folks, welcome to Computational Linear Algebra, episode number two, where we are going to discuss triangular matrices. So these are triangular matrices. You can see on the top we have what's called a lower triangular matrix, and on the bottom we have what's called an upper triangular matrix. Now you may already be able to see why these are called triangular matrices. It's because they have these triangular patterns or configurations where we have the entries of the actual matrix. You can see for the lower triangular matrix, we have values on the diagonal and below the diagonal, making it have this lower triangular form, hence the name lower triangular. We have zeros on everything above the diagonal. On an upper triangular matrix, we have our entries on the diagonal and above the diagonal, with the zeros strictly below the diagonal. Now these entries can be zeros, but they probably are not all going to be zeros. Again, this is just a configuration, and I'm telling you right now that this particular configuration of any matrix is going to allow us to much more easily and quickly solve for the unknowns of a system. Let's take the lower triangular matrix, for example, and we're just going to keep this very, very general here, so we're just going to use all these variables. You can go ahead and see that if we multiply out the first row by our x vector and then our b vector, we'll end up getting that a11 x1 is equal to b1. So very simply, we get that x1 is equal to b1 divided by a11. That seems very simple and very straightforward. We don't have to go through any Gaussian elimination here to isolate x1 because the matrix itself, when we multiply through row by column, already isolates one of our unknowns, in this case x1. Now let's move on to the next row. We can take a21 x1 plus a22 x2 is equal to b2. Now you might go ahead and say we have two unknowns here, but we just solved for x1, meaning that really we only have x2. We can substitute in our knowledge of x1, and now again we only have one unknown, so there's no need to go through Gaussian elimination to isolate one of the unknowns. We already have it isolated. We can go through, and I'll allow you to go through the steps of algebra to see that x2 is equal to 1 per a22 times the quantity b2 minus a21 per a11 b1. Or in other words, this b1 per a11 we can just leave as x1. And I think you kind of start to see the pattern here, but we can do this for the third row as well and see that we get a31x1 plus a32x2 plus a33x3 is equal to b3. And again, we already have an understanding of x1 and x2, we can substitute those values in, which I'm going to box this solution up. And so again, I'll leave you to do the algebra to go ahead and see that x3 is equal to 1 on a33 times the quantity 
B3 minus A31 B1 per A11 minus A32 divided by A22 times the quantity B2 minus A21 on A11B1. And again, you can see right here, this is just our x1 term. So we can go ahead and simplify that down to just show x1. And then this term right here, obviously, with the 1 on a22, is our x2 term. And so we can just go ahead and leave that very simply as x2. And this is very valuable information because with the case of the lower triangular matrix, we don't have to do any Gaussian elimination. We can just go ahead and start solving for unknowns working from the top of the matrix down to the bottom of the matrix. Now if we go back here to our upper and lower triangular matrices, you can see something very similar with the upper triangular matrix. In the case of the upper triangular matrix, you would start by multiplying the last row by your x vector and solving for x3 first, then getting x2. In other words, you're just going up the matrix, whereas with the lower triangular matrix, you're going down. Again, we're completely cutting out the step of isolating the unknowns because the configuration of the matrices themselves already isolate some of the unknowns. Then you can just solve for the isolated unknowns starting with whichever part of the matrix is giving you only one isolated unknown, so the top of the lower triangular matrix or the bottom of the upper triangular matrix, and then just work your way through. Now, with our work here, you may already see that this is really quick and simple to do by hand. But, if we're going to confirm that this is actually faster, that this configuration actually allows us to solve for the unknowns of this system faster, we need to test it computationally. Like before, I have Octave and Python code for our first code example here, um, both of which can be found on my GitHub and GitLab pages linked in the description down below. And I'll encourage you to pull or download this code and begin to play with it. Again, both of these scripts do the same exact thing, so let's start with Octave first. In this bit of octave code, you can see that we're generating in line 7 a random B vector, a 10-dimensional B vector. In line 8, we're generating a random 10 by 10 A matrix. And in line 12, we're generating a random 10 by 10 upper triangular matrix. In lines 10, we're solving the AX equals B system, whereas in line 14, we're solving the UX equals B system. U standing for upper triangular. With the TikTok wrappers, just like last time, we are timing to see how long it takes for each one of these systems to be solved. Let's pop into the terminal and run this script a couple of times and see what kind of times we end up finding ourselves getting. So you can see we ran our code, and you can see our B vector looks something like this. We have our random 10 by 10 A matrix with values between 0 and 100. And you can see the X vector that we got by solving the AX equals B system. This was solved in 0.2 milliseconds. That's very, very fast, but we already knew that it was really fast. You can see our upper triangular matrix here, which very clearly is upper triangular. We have values on the diagonal and above the diagonal, all zeros below the diagonal. And then here is our 
uh, result here, and you can see that this runs in 6.29 times 10 to the negative 5 seconds. So it's pretty much an order of magnitude faster. You can see this is about 2 times 10 to the negative 4, and this is 6 times 10 to the negative 5. It's significantly faster. Let's verify this by running the code one more time. Again, you can see a different B vector, a different random A matrix, and X right here. You can see that this solved in about 2 times 10 to the negative 4 seconds, or 0.2 milliseconds. And then this one in 7 times 10 to the negative 5. So again, about an order of magnitude faster. And that is really fantastic news, because it confirms that an upper triangular system or really just a triangular system, is going to be much, much easier and much, much faster to solve. Moving on into the Python code, again, it's always a little bit more involved because we need the if name equals main uh, protector there. And we're doing the same exact steps all the way through. And so uh, let's go ahead and let's run this code. So here we can go ahead and we can see our A matrix. We can see our upper triangular matrix, which I'm calling A1. You can see our random B vector here. And for the AX equals B system, here is our X vector solution. And you can see that that was solved in 5.1 times 10 to the negative 5 seconds. So significantly faster, actually, than the octave code. Now, for the ux equals b, you can see that it was solved for in 2 times 10 to the negative 5 seconds. So we're on the same order of magnitude here, but we're still solving this system in about half the time. Let's run this one more time to confirm. And you can see some very, very similar numbers in solving the AX equals B system with 5.26 times 10 to the negative 5, and with 2.38 times 10 to the negative 5. So again, both our octave code and our Python code now have verified that not just are triangular systems easier and faster to solve by hand, but they're easier and faster to solve computationally as well. But there's a reason for that. Let's talk about that. Okay, but there's some something else that's very important and very interesting that'll maybe explain why we're able to solve this, solve these systems faster computationally. And that's because if you examine each one of our solutions here for x1, x2, and x3, you'll notice a bit of a pattern beginning to emerge. That pattern can be simplified down into the following formula. This is the formula, or an algorithm, that we can use to solve a lower triangular system. And if you haven't worked much with computers before, you'll know that anytime you're writing computer code, you are writing up programs that follow standardized algorithms, algorithms that can be applied to many different cases. And this type of algorithm is something that we can actually go ahead and apply depending on whether we have an upper or lower triangular case. Obviously, this is going to change up if we're doing this for an upper triangular case, but this is specifically for lower triangular. And just to verify that this is the actual formula or the actual algorithm to solve for the unknowns of a lower triangular system, let's expand this out and verify that what we get right here actually matches up with the different results that we found here. So for x1, we're going to get a11 inverse times a quantity of b1. Obviously, i equals 1. You're not going to have any sum here. So in turn, this is just a11 inverse times b1 or b1 per a11 we can see that that's exactly what we got. Now let's take a look at x2. That's equal to 
A22 inverse times the quantity of B2 minus, again we have a sum here, but we're just going from 1 to 1, so we really just, you know, have, uh, you know, one thing there. So we get A21 X1. And bear in mind that this is a J. I apologize for my uh, very messy handwriting. Let's see if we can fix that. There we go. That looks a little bit better. Okay. We can go back and check. We can see that A22 inverse B2, A21X1. A22 inverse, B2, A21, X1, exactly what we expected. We can do the same thing now for X3. And we can see that everything checks out. A33 inverse, B3, and we'll double check that. A33 inverse, there's our B3, minus A31, X1, minus A31X1, minus A32X2, minus A32X2. So this is an algorithm that we can use to solve, again, a linear system that has the configuration of being lower triangular, or at least where the A matrix is lower triangular. So what are the big takeaways from this knowledge of triangular systems? Well, it's pretty simple and pretty straightforward. A triangular configuration is much, much quicker and much, much easier to solve than a standard A matrix or just any random configuration. But additionally, we have the tools to develop algorithms that can be implemented on the back end so that these systems can be solved very, very quickly. And that's, lar and that's a large reason of why these particular systems, the upper and lower triangular systems, or really triangular systems in general, are much quicker at getting a solution. Because there is this standardized algorithm working in the background to actually solve this system. What's actually going on in the background is you're seeing is the there's a standardized algorithm that's checking to see if the A matrix is upper or lower triangular, and then it's going through and defaulting to the specific formula or a sub-algorithm to solve that particular system. And that's very valuable because with this algorithm, we have now given the computer a way to solve any linear system that's in an upper or lower triangular form. And that is incredibly valuable. For next time, I want you to consider the following question though. If we have these algorithms and we have these upper and lower triangular matrices, how on earth do we actually end up solving any old configuration of a linear system or any old A matrix? Matrices that are not upper or lower triangular. How do we solve those? That's something that we're going to tackle next time. I want to thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to ask away in the comment section down below. And if I don't get to your question, maybe another viewer will. If you like this content, feel free to like the video, and I hope to see you again next time.